Hello everybody, welcome back to the Replica Models channel. My name is Ben and today we're going to be taking a look at Ravel's Millennium Falcon. This is a level one snap tight. So that means you're not going to need any paint and you're not going to need any glue. You actually wouldn't need any tools if it weren't for taking it off the tree, which we'll go over in a bit. So the great thing about this is you can do what I've done and you can take it from being a toy to being something more like a replica model, which I like to do. And the way you do that is you just accentuate details and maybe add some details that weren't there before. If you take a look at the original, you'll see that the exhaust ports do have a bit of black, but the way I've done them here is I've poured more of the black onto there and I've also done these small lines that are trailing off from there. Another couple things you could do is you can take it and give it some slight scuff marks here and there. Like it's been sitting around, you know, maybe it's been in the rain. And the one of the real big things you can do is you can take a wash. And what a wash is, is a thin type of paint. And you can get that into these real small, fine, detailed areas. And what it does is it accentuates those a lot more. So if you take a look at one that has not been painted, you'll see that these lines are a lot more blended into the overall piece. And so when you first take it out, it's going to look something like this. This is a tree from a different model that I had. And of course I did not use these parts, but I wanted to show you what the tree looks like. And so all the various parts of the Millennium Falcon will be on something like this. So the only tool that you're gonna want is this right here. And you can find that at your hobby shop or you can find it at your hardware store. It's a pretty common tool. And what it does is it gives you a real flat edge on one side and that's great for taking off parts off of a tree because you can get real close into where you want it cut and it will leave you a relatively smooth surface which is, which is nice to have. If you're gonna wanna put together a model and take it from being you know, just the regular one you put together to being something a little bit more detailed, that's one of the tools you're gonna want. And I would suggest if you're going to have it for your kids and it's more of a play thing, I would suggest putting it together and leaving it the way it is. If you're gonna want to paint it, make it more of a replica model, I would suggest that you don't handle it too much thereafter for various reasons, mostly, the paints, um, they're a little bit different and I'll show you. So one of the paints, the most common paint that you will see is this testers paint, which is a great paint and it's more of a permanent paint. So it's not going to be rubbing off as easily. Of course, everything takes damage if you try hard enough, but the downside to this is it is toxic. So you're gonna to wanna to be in a ventilated area, maybe wear a mask if you're using this because it is it is definitely got some chemicals in there that you don't wanna be smelling and you don't want your pets around it or nothing like that. So that's one kind of downfall to this. Uh, but if you have a mask and you're by yourself, have a well ventilated room because you don't want to be in a closed room with this, it's, it's good to have. But in, if you don't have that sort of area, this one is going to be maybe your second choice, but this is the first choice for many model makers. This is the model paint. Uh, the next one I have here is not necessarily for model making. It is a crafter's paint. So you can find this at your craft store. These are very common. And as you can see, it doesn't really say anything about model making but this one is more of a matte color matte which means it's not going to be shiny whereas this one is going to have more of a glisten they do also sell matte paints but if you're looking for a true matte you're probably going to be looking at these but again this one if you give it a good rub it's going to rub off if you scratch it a little bit it's probably going to come off 
So it's less of a permanent paint, but the big thing about this is it's non-toxic. And if you have just a little glob out, you're really not even gonna know it's there. Uh, whereas that other one, you're definitely gonna smell it as soon as you open it. And so this one I love to use for almost all my models. Um, and then of course it comes in various colors. Um, the only thing is I do have some models that I sell. Those ones, I almost never use this. Um, actually, I don't believe I ever have used this on a model that I sell because of the way it is less permanent. So I always make sure to use these on anything that I sell because I want the permanent on there and I don't want it to be coming off while you're taking a look at it or anything like that. So one of the things that I like to do with those is I'll take a glob and put it on my paintbrush. These paintbrushes that I like to use are called Craft Smart. I picked them up from Michaels and there are actually a bunch of them for a pretty good price. And you can also get the discount on them, which is really good. So if you just go buy these, these will last me quite a while, maybe, you know, four models, depending on which models I'm doing. And so, as you can see, I did a lot of detail on the exhaust vents here. You put more black in there, and then you also trail off a little bit of the exhaust because you're flying, so that exhaust is going to be coming off this way. And that's one of the fine details that really takes this model to the next level. Another thing you can do is you also have scuff marks that you can put on. Maybe run them down the sides as if you've been in some rain and it's running down and some of that dust and dirt kind of settles in lines. You might want to darken some areas like this area looks like it's missing a panel. So in there I darkened it up because that's not really the outside of the ship or the way it should look. So those are some quick tips there to make it look a little bit better. Um, I did try and darken the entire thing up because when it did come out it gives you a very clean plastic look which is nice but as you've seen in the movies the Millennium Falcon is never clean per se so so you're gonna want to darken everything up a little bit I also did some more detail in this side area here very little a little bit will go a long way because you can always go back and darken it up if you like but if you darken it too much, it's a lot harder to take anything off. So on the bottom side, I didn't do too much. I kind of gave it a little bit less because I figured most of the time it's going to be spending its time upright like that. So a lot of the dust and dirt and all that grime would be up on the top. So let's get into some of the really cool parts about this. The benefits of getting a... Uh, a level one model like this especially this particular one it's sort of rare um, to get a model that has lights and sounds in it and it is one that you put together it's kind of coming more and more of a thing but this one when I saw it and I saw that it had the lights and sounds I thought hey that's really cool that's something that I haven't seen so let's look at a couple of the lights and sounds here another really cool part about it is they actually hid the action button right here on the vent so the vent is the button I love that they did that that just makes the model so much better than having an actual button here somewhere that does not go on the Falcon at all um, I forgot to mention but this is the Falcon from the Force Awakens so finding it might be a little bit harder in the store but online they go for about $25 so again let's take a look at the lights and sound. So it has a cycle of three different sounds there, which are all pretty cool. And they also sound pretty screen accurate as well. You know that some toys you get, you play a sound and it's like, well, I don't know where they got that sound, but it's not from the Falcon. But all these sound exactly like what it should sound like, which is nice. That's the only one that's kind of a little weird to me. 
but I'm sure it's in there somewhere. But that one's perfect, and this one, that's definitely perfect too. I like that sound. And then on the bottom here, you also have retractable legs so that you can land the Falcon just like we do have here, or you can put them up. And you can have the Falcon in flight mode. So again, if this is gonna be a toy for your kids, I would suggest put it together and not paint it. It is perfect the way it is. But if you wanna have something a little bit more inexpensive, but also something that you can display, I would suggest painting it up a little bit, putting a little bit of wash, and you can even add some more detail on your own. Some things that maybe you don't see on the Millennium Falcon, like a lot of the times, you don't see a lot of damage to the front end here where you'd be making entry, re-entries and taking off. But some of the models that people do, they'll put some, some slight damage on there, a little bit of black burning because that's what a space shuttle might look like on re-entry. But this one, I kind of tried to go a little bit more screen accurate, which was actually very subtle. So, that's what I like to do with mine. But again, if you go real light, you can always add more on in the end. So in retrospective, am I glad that I picked it up? Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Cause I can't seem to find any more like this in the store right now. Uh, the cool thing about it is I picked it up in a craft store and they offered me a, a discount on it. So I think I ended up getting this for somewhere around $18, which to me is, definitely worth it but yep yeah, that's my Ravel Millennium Falcon review totally something that if you find and you you got to have it if you don't have a Millennium Falcon model you got to have one right if you love Star Wars so that's to sum it up there please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you want more videos like this reviews on models tips on modeling and if you have any questions, go ahead and leave it down in the comments. I try to get back to everybody as best as I can. And thanks again. Have a great day.